Take him. You're watching HL. And I only have fond memories of London. I don't, I can't recall any times that I feel bitterness. I had a great time here. It was a tremendous place to learn how to move immovable objects, and that is the London community's political uh, conservatism. And yet at the same time, you know, Sunday shopping was legal, and they haven't banned any records or tapes since I uh, sold the two live crew tapes. So you can see that progress is being made. It's just you, sometimes you want results that day, and sometimes results take decades. And so as you get older, you realize that, hey, things are happening. And even if I go to jail in America, people will, Canadians will be aware that I'm being held against my will in the United States for something that I was never charged with in Canada, that no one ever objected to. I, to this day, have never met anybody who objected to all the seeds I sold and all the money I gave away. I certainly never met anybody who turned down any of the money I gave away. No charities ever said, no, we don't want that money. No political party ever said, we don't want that money. Political leaders of every stripe came to my organization and events, and everybody knew it was from seed sales. And I had a lovely time here. I loved my bookshop. It was the greatest job you could ever have. And everybody who ever came into my store was always really nice to me, even though I was occasionally pretty hectoring and pretty uh, proselytizing to them. And I, there were a few customers that would go, whoa, you have to get the speech with every book, you know. So they realized there was a price to pay for those bargains. Welcome back to Inquiry and our look at Mark Emery, a longtime Londoner whose decades-old fight to legalize marijuana could land him in jail for life in the United States thanks to the sale of millions of dollars worth of marijuana seeds to Americans. Emery says at the end of the day, it's not just about the marijuana. It's about fighting for rights he feels all North Americans should have. And he takes some satisfaction that times have changed. In Canada just 10 years ago, there was no legal medication marijuana or hemp stores like the one he operates in Vancouver. It's about the fact that marijuana people go to jail. And the only way to stop that is by, I thought, flooding the North America with marijuana, making everybody self-sufficient so they don't have to buy in the inner cities of America, they don't have to buy from organized crime, and they can grow their own marijuana. And then the money they sent me, I gave it all away. So we gave away $4 million to a variety of political parties and candidates. We started political parties. We gave money to Israeli marijuana party, the New Zealand marijuana. I gave money, $7,000, to the Dennis Kucinich for president campaign last year because he favored legalizing marijuana. I bought tables at Jack Layton dinners, we've uh, spent money supporting the NDP in the last two federal elections. Anything it's taken, we have spent the money to do that. What if there wasn't a marijuana issue? What would be your issue right now? Well, whatever people are going to jail for unjustly, and uh, that would be other drugs too, because although other drugs can be more hazardous than marijuana, no one should go to jail for their personal lifestyle choices. So I would invariably be helping, and they're always very wounded individuals. Anybody who's a drug addict, if we want to use that term, uh, and I don't refer to marijuana people in that breath, but anybody who's a drug addict is a person who's had a terrible life usually in their childhood. They have had psychic wounds and, and no one's helping them, so by putting them in jail because of their personal problems is a cruel, cruel, cruel ending to what's already been an injustice in their life. So I would probably be always helping the people who are unjustly jailed. And, and because of problems that are endemic in our society. Drug addiction will become worse, not better, over the years. So if we're going to jail everybody who buys drugs, sells drugs, and, and produces drugs, then we're going to need a huge gulag around the earth to fill up with millions and millions of people who have drug problems because we live in a drug-soaked society. The average person who's 62 years old is on eight given drugs at any given time, and they're allowed to drive cars and, and operate heavy machinery. So it's, it's wrong to persecute anyone for the drugs that are in their body. And a final word now from Mark Emery as he prepares for what he's sure is his certain extradition to the United States along with two of his colleagues. The man who sees himself in terms of a comic book hero is almost relishing what could be his final battle. Well, I always have been passionate about issues of justice and personal autonomy and, and, in, and freedom. And there are very few people doing that. There are lots of politicians, but very few liberators. There's very a lot of people who are advocating change, but mostly institutional change or organizational change. And I'm trying to hopefully do something that frees people from jail. I have to constantly remind people that there's a quarter million people in jail around the world at any given time for marijuana. And since 1955, 50 years ago, 26 million people have been arrested and charged, detained, jailed, and sometimes millions of people have spent years in jail for marijuana. So it's a crisis that's not getting better. We arrested more people last year in Canada for marijuana possession than ever before. 45,000 possession cases alone in Canada. It's staggering. So the problem isn't getting better it's getting worse. So in some senses, I feel I failed because it's gotten worse in 10 years. But I remain one of the few people who are out there taking chances, l 
trying to help all these people. And so I personally feel really good about myself. So if I have to spend time in a U.S. prison for the rest of my life, and, and the irony is, is that that's 35 years is more than you'd get if you were a multiple murderer convicted in Canada. 25 years is the maximum. And in addition to which, no one's ever gone to jail for selling seeds in Canada. The last time anyone was convicted was a $200 fine in the year 2000. So it's quite a contrast that the last person who sold seeds in Canada got a $200 fine, and I faced 35 years in a U.S. federal penitentiary as the drug kingpin. So I'd be put in maximum security. That's if you put your toes over the U.S. border. Well... Almost every extradition the United States has sought in Canada has succeeded. Only three times in the history of this country, in 130 years, has Can Canadian government not extradited someone sought by the U.S. So you might, you, you do face the danger of going? Oh, I think the danger is almost 100%. When I go on a speaking tour later this year, and perhaps next year, I'll be calling it my farewell tour, because the odds are, uh, I told Canadians they'll never see me alive again. Even if they make, I, I believe the DA would be, it's not in their nature to let me out alive because I represent like the allied forces that are allied against them. And if I win, that means their $2 billion budget is over, all those people are unemployed, the DEA goes out of business. So it's either me or them, ultimately. And I kind of like the David and Goliath aspect to that. So again, it's, it's, it's my comic book life is following me right to my destiny at the end. Mark Emery says the harshest sentence any Canadian has ever received for selling marijuana plant seeds is $200. And the laws in Canada aren't that different from in the U.S. It's the way they're prosecuted that makes this story such a fascinating example of the difference in the war on drugs in Canada versus the U.S. As for the next chapter in this saga, if Emery steps onto American soil, he will be arrested. Otherwise, his extradition hearing is set for later this year. The Canadian courts will decide if the Prince of Pot will be handed over to the Americans. I'm Jennifer Hall. Thanks for joining us. I hope you'll tune in again next week.